on the 14th of October, 2012, yeah, Felix Baumgartner jumped from a helium balloon at 127,000 feet, literally the edge of space. At 98,000 feet, he broke the speed of sound. He reached speeds of 843 miles per hour, that's Mach 1.25, the first human ever to do so unpowered. Baumgartner was in free fall for four minutes and 19 seconds. All of this is frankly extraordinary, but what makes this story even more profound is that Baumgartner was claustrophobic. <laughs> he needed to be in that suit for five or six hours, and he couldn't spend more than 30 minutes in there without wanting to rip off his helmet, which, if he did on the mission, is not going to end too well. He worked with a performance psychologist, a man called Michael Gervais, to try and overcome his fear. And Gervais said, it's possible to extinguish fear, but it's very dangerous. Not many people make it through, but he wanted it with all of his faculty. It mattered more to him to go for it and die than to play it safe and never achieve his potential. Just imagine that for a moment, that this guy would push himself to the limit of his existence to actually risk his own life in the pursuit of human potential. And he smashed it. He spent six hours in a suit he'd previously only been able to spend 30 minutes in. The reason I wanted to talk to Felix, about Felix today is because I believe it's a fundamental example of something I think could change your lives. TED is about ideas worth spreading. And I want you to leave here today with the idea that you can go out there and change the world. And if not the world, maybe your world. 24 years ago, I left university. I know what you're thinking, I don't look that old. <laughs> and my housemate said to me, what are you going to do now? Oh, work in a pub maybe, I thought, which was about the limit of my ambition at that point. I just graduated with a degree in illustration, or coloring in as most of my friends call it. <laughs> And he was convinced he was going to make me into a famous artist. Sure enough, the next day he came in and said, I've got your first job. The guys that live next door run a construction company. They want you to draw a logo. So I sat down with my pens. I hand drew a logo. I copied it onto some business cards and some letterheads. And voila, my life as a designer had begun. <laughs> 24 years later, as you've heard, I now run an award-winning design studio here in Winchester, working for clients like Estee Lauder and Samsung. Now, during those last 24 years, I've tried to pick out the key elements for a successful business, but also a successful life. And as part of that journey, I've worked with numerous consultants and mentors and coaches. I've also studied lots of different frameworks, which I think add real value. I think about Jim Collins and his hedgehog principle or his flywheel concept. I think about Greg McEwen and his essentialism or Simon Sinek and his golden circle. But today I wanted to introduce another framework to you something I think Felix showed when he jumped from that balloon at 127,000 feet. What he did, and what I think we've all got the ability to do, is what I call going beyond. Now, in honor of Simon Sinek and his brilliant oh, sorry, golden circle theory, I'm going to use his theory to describe mine. And if I can take a small share of those 58 million views, I'll be more than happy. <laughs> so let's start with the what. Sinek talks about the what, the how, and the why. So we'll start with the what. What do I mean by going beyond? It's simply this. It's pushing yourself further than you thought you could, going the extra mile, doing things other people won't do, conquering your fears, finding new, exciting, and innovative ways of doing things. And the purpose of this framework is simple. It's to maximize the opportunities that come your way. Now, we often hear about sports people who've achieved incredible things by going beyond. As a big football fan, I often think about Ronaldo staying late at training every day, dedicating his life to staying fit. And at the age of 37, he's still playing at the top. He's won five Champions League titles, five Ballon d'Or, three English titles, two Spanish titles, two Italian titles, and he is the world's leading goal scorer. Or I think about the Williams sisters, who together with their father, dedicated their lives to tennis and of becoming the best in the world. Between them, they've won 30 Grand Slam titles, they both reached world number one, and they both won four gold medals. Now, I could stand here today and probably give you 50 examples of famous people who've achieved incredible things by going beyond. And quite often, that's the reason they're famous, but that's not the reason for going beyond. 
So I thought it would be useful to give you examples from my own experience, from somebody with absolutely no fame whatsoever. <laughs> Let me give you an example. It's something I like to call the best worst talk ever. Back in May 2017, I was invited to speak at Tate Modern in London. And this is very early on in my speaking career. I think I'd done one gig before this. And the idea was to speak at a conference for events and venues. My, my talk was to be about design and engagement with digital apps. Now, I was very nervous. I spent weeks writing that talk, designing those slides perfectly, practicing every day. And as I stepped out as the first speaker at 5 o'clock on a Monday, I was confronted by six people in the audience. <laughs> now, I had a choice at this stage. The event manager looked at me and said, what do you want to do? I could run away, which is what I wanted to do. After all, six people weren't going to miss me, right? It's harder to talk to six people than it is to hundreds. However, I took a deep breath, and I went for it. 20 minutes later, I stepped away from that screen, feeling slightly dejected and crestfallen, I have to admit. I put my heart and soul into that talk, and there were six people there. As part of the talk, I'd run a competition to engage the huge audience in front of me. <laughs> and the lady that won it stood, sat at the front there with her colleague, and I gave her her prize, and I said, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for listening. It means the world to me. And she just looked at me and smiled and said, that was incredible. Would you like to come and pick up a brief from us tomorrow? I work for Samsung. <laughs> I had a little think about it, and I said, yes. <laughs> the next morning at 9 o'clock, I was in the design agency for Samsung, picking up a brief to design and build experiential apps for their mobile devices. Now, I didn't jump from the edge of space. I didn't break any records or save any lives. But I'm telling you now, I pushed myself further than I thought I could go that day. I was terrified, but I went for it. And the result is, we've been working with Samsung since 2017, helping them to launch their mobile devices all over the country. They became one of our biggest clients. OK, so we know what what is. Let's have a look at how. <laughs> and to describe how, I'm going to give you a framework. Not so much a golden circle, more of a pyramid of beyond. Now, the point of this pyramid is simple. It's a series of stages, each one coming after the last. And the idea is <laughs> to reach that pinnacle. Now, that pinnacle could be achieving a goal, smashing a target, or doing something incredible. Let's look at each stage one by one. Oh, all at once. <laughs> Technology. We start, let's just start, with defined, <laughs> defined purpose. This is all about understanding what you're about, what your why is. This should be at the heart of all your decision making, like a North Star that you can keep coming back to. The second stage is recognize strengths. Now, this is all about understanding what your personal strengths are and using them in any given situation. If you're brilliant with people, put yourself in a networking environment. If you're a great musician, create a piece that people are going to love. If you're a brilliant writer, write content that people are going to engage with. Now, it's important to note that once those first two stages are in place, they tend not to change. We all know what our values are and our strengths are, but you can revisit them from time to time, update them, and adapt them. Now, the next step is about qualified choices. Now, you can apply going beyond to every part of your life, but my advice is to choose your moments carefully, because if you do this all the time, you're going to burn out very quickly. So qualify the opportunities that come your way. Do they align with your values? Do they play to your strengths? Can you go beyond? Now, the next step, specific insight. Thank you, Simon. Now, as a design thinker, I'm immersed in a world of curiosity. Remember, A, B, C, always be curious, always do your research. If you think about a job interview, you wouldn't just turn up and expect to know the answer to all their questions. Do your research, find out about the company, find out about the role you're applying for, speak to other people in similar roles, obsess about the people who are in that room. What do they do? What motivates them? Can you connect to them? And the next step, the fun bit, is what I call amplified action. Now, there's a famous maxim in the design industry, it's all about pitching, and it goes like this. No one ever lost a pitch by doing too much work. When we go into a pitch scenario, there's one thing we don't have control over, and that's what the other people are doing. So we're always trying to do more. And there's always more you can do. There's always new and exciting ways of doing things. So when you think you've done everything, just ask yourself, is there more that I can do? And finally, before you get to that pinnacle, 
there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, and that's magical mistakes. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and deliberately cock things up, but what I am saying is please don't be afraid to make mistakes. History is littered with incredible stories of people who've made mistakes, have gone on to be huge successes. I think about Alexander Fleming, who accidentally discovered penicillin by leaving his dirty Petri dishes out all weekend and saved millions of lives. And the really charming story of Richard James, who was trying to protect sensitive instruments on ship voyages in the 1940s and accidentally designed the Slinky, which went on to sell 300 million copies. <laughs> so we've reached our pinnacle. We know what going beyond is, and we know how to do it. Let's look at why. And to describe why, I'm going to leave you with one final story. As Jan said, in my spare time, I helped to coach a girls' football team, Winchester City Flyers. There's 24 teams in the club, making it the biggest all-female club in Hampshire. And the girls that we coach, the Falcons, are under 16s. Now, at the start of the pandemic, it was obvious to us we weren't going to be able to play and we weren't going to be able to train. But we wanted to keep up the team spirit and the brilliant communication that their manager, Adam, had instilled in them. So we decided to set the girls a series of challenges, one of which was, how many keepy-uppies can you do? Now, at the start of the week, we got loads of videos on our WhatsApp group of the girls trying to do as many keepy-uppies as possible. Inevitably, most of them ended up like this. Now, I think the total in this particular video is about 14, which is pretty good, right? It's probably more than I can do. But here's what Going Beyond meant to this particular flyer. She spent every day in her garden over the summer practicing more and more and more. And if we think back to our pyramid, defined purpose. Now, she's only 15, and it's not many teenagers who have a real sense of purpose, but she had a genuine passion for her sport and a real sense of determination. Recognized strengths. Now, she knew that this was a task she could do. As a player, she had great coordination and great technique. Qualified choices. Now, we sent them quite a few different challenges, but this was the one that she picked. This was the one she knew she could excel at. Specific insight. Now, not only did she practice every single day trying to do more and more keepy-uppies, but she studied other players. She looked at professionals. She pored over videos on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. And not only did she find ways of doing more keepy-uppies, she learned other skills and tricks. Amplified action. Oh, yeah. Every day in that garden, practicing, 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 never stopping, whatever the weather. A magical mistake. She made plenty of mistakes. She'd get to 49 and drop the ball, get to 90 and kick it over the fence. But every time, she picked that ball up, learned from her mistake, and went again. And by the end of the summer, this is where she got to. Not only had she smashed her total, getting to an incredible... 750 keepy-uppies, she could now do all of these skills and tricks as well. But here's what else is amazing about this, and here's why going beyond is so important. Once Jess had done all of this, some incredible things happened. She was invited to play for Hampshire County. Her team went undefeated for five months, reaching top spot in the Division I in the Hampshire League. She became one of the highest scoring midfielders in that league. She was invited to train with the advanced coaching at Southampton Football Club, and her team reached the plate final of the Hampshire girls under 16. But here's what else is incredible about this. Not only did all those incredible things happen to her, but she inspired other people. Her two siblings watched her all summer and tried to emulate her. Her younger brother, Charlie, went from seven to 130 keepy-uppies and ended up playing in the, in the Junior Premier League down in Southampton. Her younger sister, Lily, was so inspired by her, she joined the Winchester City Flyers and now plays for the under-9s. But perhaps the most inspiring story of all of this is that Jess was so passionate about her sport, she decided to use it as a subject at her own speaking event. She did a speak-out exam at school, and she talked about women in football. And some months later, just earlier this year, a young boy in her class who she'd never spoken to before tapped her on the shoulder and said, Jess, if I wanted to find out more about women in football, where's the best place to start? He went on to tell her he'd been so inspired by her talk and that his younger sister had now started playing football and he saw Jess as a role model. 
She had gone from this shy girl who could do a few keepy-uppies to somebody who'd smashed a target, achieved incredible things, and inspired other people. And perhaps the most inspirational part of this story, from my point of view, is that Jessica is my daughter. <laughs> so. so, please, go out there, go beyond, achieve incredible things, and inspire other people. Thank you.